kiss me. It's not like that. I'm not like that. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 asexual characters in film and TV. I basically identify as asexual. Oh, wait, what? It's just how I am. But I was never interested in girls either. What then? Nothing. Everybody is interested in something. Not me. It actually feels nice to finally say it out loud. I am an asexual person. I am asexual. For this list, we'll be looking at the best characters that are said or thought to be asexual. For now, we're not including actors who portrayed their characters asexually, only canon asexuality. We also won't be including Riverdale's Jughead, as he's only asexual in Archie comics. Stay. Who's your favorite asexual icon? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Tick. The Tick franchise. You're a superhero. That's what it says in my mailbox. Many iconic superheroes also have equally iconic love interests, like Superman and Lois Lane or Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson. That's not the case with The Tick, the blue-suited and antennaed crime fighter who starred in three TV series, both live-action and animated. Prepare for swift justice! Oh ho! In each iteration, his passion lies not in the bedroom, but in keeping the streets of the city safe. For destiny has called on him, and even now he feels her warm, moist hand at the small of his back. While he does get married in the original comic to Chloris, the relationship ends because of their intimacy problems. With less time worrying about love, he has more time to focus on delivering justice to the likes of Chairface Chippendale and other nemeses. The party's over, Chairface! Give it up, or we'll write this whole place off the face of the earth. Okay. Number nine, Adrian Veidt, Watchmen. The flies are quite raw, master. Yeah, I rolled around this yesterday. Adrian Veidt, the Watchmen's filthy rich arch enemy, also known as Ozymandias, is one of the most compelling and complex villains ever crafted, and his sexual orientation adds to that complexity. In the Watchmen TV series, Jeremy Irons plays an older Vite, hiding out in a castle on one of Jupiter's moons after faking his death. His only company are his clones slash servants, who he's not above killing when the mood strikes. Veidt, despite being physically attractive, doesn't seem to have any interest in any kind of physical affection. As series creator Damon Lindelof explains, quote, He's such a good-looking guy, but he doesn't seem to be attracted to people of either gender, or even talk about things in sexual terms. Number 8. Alan Garner, The Hangover Thank you. Oh, thank you. The first Hangover movie was a comedy smash hit right out of the gate, and a huge portion of that success can be attributed to Zach Galifianakis' unbelievable funny performance as the bearded and unpredictable Alan Garner, a complete man-child who nonetheless has his moments of something bordering on genius. Alan goes against the grain in many ways. He just needs a little extra. There we go. <laughs> Some of these big boys. You gotta give him two shots. <laughs> so it made sense when, at the premiere of The Hangover Part 2, director Todd Phillips referred to Alan as asexual. He did get married to Melissa McCarthy's Cassie in the third film, but remember, asexual doesn't mean incapable of understanding love, and various identities can exist within the ace spectrum. But she's my soulmate, and my new best friend. Number 7. Owen Burnett, Gargoyles the human persona of trickster and child of Oberon, known as Puck, Owen Burnett is a handsome man with some distinct traits, namely his left hand, which is actually a fist turned to stone. It would appear that the cauldron spell of immortality has a price. When a fan asked Gargoyles creator Greg Weissman about Owen's orientation, Weissman replied that Owen was asexual. He also shared that Puck was bisexual. You don't know what you're asking. Believe me. While Weissman doesn't elaborate on these labels, we trust a creator to understand his characters better than anyone. He also accepted the fans' head canon, which saw Owen as being gay. 
If you haven't watched Gargoyles since you were a kid, studying Owen and Puck from this angle is the perfect excuse to revisit it. It may prove difficult to find the necessary manpower. This castle has a bad reputation. The locals consider it haunted. Number six, Misty Day, American Horror Story. Misty Day. She wasn't much older than any of you. And she had a gift, the power of resurgence. It can be hard for anyone who's asexual to feel understood, but Misty Day's circumstances are especially difficult. A witch with the ability to bring things back to life, Misty, played by Lily Robb, is so feared among her own Pentecostal community that they burn her at the stake. It's you that will end in flames. I swear it. She brings herself back to life and spends her days exploring New Orleans swamps and finding comfort in the music of Stevie Nicks. You must be Misty. I'm Stevie Nicks. <laughs> While Misty's orientation wasn't discussed on the show, series creator Ryan Murphy said he thought of Misty as, quote, just an asexual character. But with her multifaceted personality and Rob's sensitive performance, Misty shows just how diverse and dynamic asexual people can be. It's not many people who can bring alligators back to life. Not all dead. <laughs> Number five, Rafael Santiago, Shadowhunters. Release the Shadowhunter, my orders. There have been some truly memorable characters who happen to be both asexual and supernatural. Case in point, Rafael Santiago, a vampire who previously ran the Brooklyn Vampire Clan. In the second season, Rafael, played by David Castro, forges a relationship with Shadowhunter Isabel Lightwood. I'm just not interested in sex. However, he later discloses his asexual identity to her, which even goes back to his pre-vampire state. I've always been like this. Shadowhunters is based on the Mortal Instruments book series. In 2014, author Cassandra Clare tweeted that his asexuality was canon. Though not the most outwardly affectionate person, Raphael still knows how to show he truly cares about someone. And the thought of losing her, my last living relatives, I can't sleep. Number four, Varys, Game of Thrones. Some doors close forever, others open in most unexpected places. Game of Thrones was notorious for, among other things, its sex scenes. So it's quite remarkable that one of its fascinating characters was asexual. Ex-slave and eunuch Lord Varys, also known as the Spider, serves as King's Landing's Master of Whisperers. His devotion lies not in any one person, but in upholding the realm. Thwarting you has never been my primary ambition, I promise you. Speaking on his lack of sexual attraction, which came before his eunuch status, Varys mourns the effects of infatuation on his surroundings, and his relief at not having to deal with it. The absence of desire leaves one free to pursue other things, such as... Despite his incredibly calm manner, Varys is actually one of the most cutthroat people in Westeros, able to use his words to get his way with stunning results. Good thing he's not playing the game of love. Number three, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock. You don't have a girlfriend then? Girlfriend? No, not really my area. Sherlock Holmes has been portrayed in film and television more than 250 times, a record for a fictional character. So there are a lot of interpretations of the famous detective, who's been portrayed by actors as distinguished as Christopher Lee, Christopher Plummer, and Robert Downey Jr. In summary, ears ringing, jaw fractured, three ribs cracked, four broken, diaphragm hemorrhaging, physical recovery six weeks. In the BBC series Sherlock, Holmes, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, is understood to be asexual. What the hell are you doing? Bored. However, this seems to be a self-disciplined decision instead of a lack of attraction. According to Cumberbatch, Holmes needs to avoid fanning the flames of desire so he can focus on solving crimes. In the character's own words, he's married to his work. John, um, I think you should know that I consider myself married to my work. I'm, well, I'm flattered by your no. interest. I'm really not looking for anything. No, I'm not asking. No. This kind of deep characterization makes Cumberbatch's version one of the most interesting Sherlock Holmes of all time. Is that a British Army Browning L9A1 in your pocket? Or are you just pleased to see me? Both. Number two, Todd Chavez, Bojack Horseman. I think I'm asexual. Asexual what? Dynamo? Deviant? Harassment lawsuit waiting to happen? No, asexual, not 
sexual. When BoJack Horseman first started, it seemed like Todd, voiced by Aaron Paul, might not have much character beyond being BoJack's slacker housemate. However, as the series progressed, Todd's personality grew, as did our fondness for him. In the third season finale, Todd starts to realize he might be asexual, and comes to accept his true nature in the following season. The show makes Todd's asexuality a key part of his identity, but not the only part. Listen, I haven't told my family I'm asexual, so it might be best if for tonight we just pretend we're sexually active. I mean, it's a family dinner. What are the odds are going to ask questions about our sexuality, right? He also starts relationships with other asexuals, like Axolotl, Yolanda Buenaventura, and Rabbit Maud. And of course, he always finds time for crazy escapades like starting a clown dentist business. Got a week to whip these dentists into clowns, Whoa. but they're just not silly or wacky or prone to kooky hijinks of any kind. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. SpongeBob SquarePants SpongeBob SquarePants As optimistic and cheerful as he is square and yellow, SpongeBob SquarePants has been entertaining millions of viewers for more than 20 years. But Bikini Bottom's most famous resident has also had his sexuality somewhat scrutinized, with some speculating the absorbent fry cook is gay. Series creator, the late Steven Hillenburg, defined SpongeBob as being somewhat asexual. This would be in line with actual sea sponges, which reproduce asexually. Can you reproduce by budding? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Of course, SpongeBob is shown to have a mother and a father. Come on, SpongeBob. Hurry, hurry, son. Your mother has dinner waiting. Hi, Mom. But we're not going to nitpick the logic of a show that frequently shows fires happening underwater, or one with a main character that's provided as much joy as SpongeBob has. Hey, if we're underwater, how can there be a. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.